This would be Honors Geometry Chapter 9 Review, focusing on the different right triangle relationships. One of the first relationships we discussed in Chapter 9 was the relationships of the sides of the right triangle, known as the Pythagorean Theorem. If we label the right triangle legs, A and B, and the hypotenuse C, then remember that A squared plus B squared always equals C squared on any right triangle. An important thing to remember when you're solving using the Pythagorean Theorem is that the last step of the solving always requires taking the square root of a number. The second main topic in Chapter 9 was the Altitude to Hypotenuse Theorems, which came out of um, similar triangles as well. When you have an altitude drawn to a hypotenuse of a right triangle, it creates three sets of similar triangles. If we label the sides of the right triangle that we have in this diagram, A on the left, B on the bottom, and the hypotenuse C, and we label the altitude H for height, and the pieces of the hypotenuse X and Y, then the altitude on hypotenuse theorems are this. The first is a relationship of the leg with compared to the hypotenuse. The relationship is that the leg squared, or a squared in this diagram, equals the entire hypotenuse times the adjacent piece of the hypotenuse from the altitude. So again, that would be a squared equals c times x. The second equation would be the same using the other leg. The leg squared equals the entire hypotenuse times the adjacent piece. So b squared equals c times the adjacent piece y. And finally, the third altitude on hypotenuse theorem relates the two side-by-side -side smaller right triangles. The equation that results is that the altitude squared equals the product of the pieces of the hypotenuse. So in this example, h squared would equal x times y. We also had an introduction to right triangle trig in Chapter 9. Remember again that this is only used when you have a right triangle. Labeling the sides of this triangle with respect to angle A as your reference angle, then the side opposite would be BC, so this would be considered the opposite leg to angle A. The closest side, in other words the side that helps form angle A would be considered the adjacent leg and of course the side across from 90 degrees is always considered the hypotenuse. So there are three ratios that we focus on. The sine ratio, the cosine ratio, and the tangent ratio. Whenever you are talking about your trig ratios, you always refer to an angle of reference. Sine is the ratio of the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the ratio of the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg. So in this diagram, if we label these sides A, B, and C, the sine of angle A be the opposite of angle A, which would be A, over the hypotenuse, C. The cosine of angle A, again the ratio of the adjacent leg to the hypotenuse, would be B over C. And the tangent of angle A would be the opposite over the adjacent, or A over B in this diagram. Right triangle trig is often used 
in many applications, one of which is to solve a right triangle. Solving a right triangle means you find the length of all the missing sides and angles. So in this diagram, we want to find the length of AC. We want to find the measure of angle A and find the measure of angle B. So notice that we have two of the three sides of the right triangle. So to solve for AC, which I will call x, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So that would be x squared plus 4 squared equals 7 squared. Remember that C is always the hypotenuse or the side across from the 90 degree angle. Following order of operations, square your numbers first. So we'll have x squared plus 16 equals 49. Then begin solving by performing opposite operations. So subtract 16. You'll have x squared equals 33. Finally, to find the value of x, we'll take the square root of both sides. So using your calculator, if we take the square root of 33 and round to the nearest tenth, you will get that x is approximately 5.7. So AC has a length of approximately 5.7 centimeters. It's also helpful to fill in information on the diagram as you work through when there are multiple questions referring to the same diagram. So now to find the measure of angle A, you can use any one of the three trig ratios because we have all three lengths of the sides of the triangles. So I'm going to use the sine ratio. So the sine of angle A, remember that is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 4 divided by 7. Now in your calculator, when you want to find the value of an angle, you use the inverse function. So in the calculator, you would punch in um, the inverse of sine. So second sine, then 4 divided by 7 goes in parentheses, and hit enter, and you will get that the angle measure rounded to the nearest tenth is approximately 55.2 degrees. So angle A measure of about 55.2 degrees. Now since angle A is the acute angle of a right triangle, then we know that measure of angle B would have to be the complement to angle A. So to find angle B, we're going to do 90 degrees minus 55.2 degrees. And you will end up with 34.8 degrees from angle B.